Buongiorno. My name is uh, Shubhamrita Chaitanya. I am a representative of Mata Amritanmai Center. That is the organization led by the world known humanitarian and spiritual leader called Amma or Mata Amritanandamai. Meditation is about calming the mind, about gaining one pointedness, about gaining concentration. The primary aim of meditation is the purification of the mind, is to make the mind concentrated. But along with it, as that happens, you know, you see many other things growing in you. Like uh, you become more and more peaceful in your attitude, you are able to keep the mind more in the present moment than be in the past or in the future. You are able to be emotionally more mature, you know, you are in control of your emotions more. And of course, as uh, you know, so many people in the world know about meditation today through, you know, as a way of gaining good health, it also has a very positive impact on improving one's health condition. And the paths are many. You know, there are so many methods by which you can meditate. It could be through the path of love. It could be through the path of self-inquiry. It could be through the path of, you know, focusing on lights. There are so many methods to it. But of course, the goal of all this is one that is to gain this concentration. Especially in today's world, when we hear the word stress so commonly, you know, right from children, till the old people, you hear everybody saying, I am so stressed in life. One of the main things is, you know, you are not more, more stressed because, just because of the work. You are more stressed because also of the mental dissipation, you know, that happens such a lot. You know, there are so many thoughts in our mind that keep us dragging in all possible directions. And we are never able to keep ourselves in one thing, in what we are really doing. We are never able to focus on a single thing. So as a result, as our mind gets stretched in all possible directions, and this really leads to a lot of you know, mental tiredness. So meditation really helps you to curb all this and gain that needed focus. And that's why people who meditate deeply can see that they become very efficient, very creative, even in the work that they do also. Because when they are doing something, they are totally there, they are not somewhere else. And also, of course, you know, through this, you know, you become more peaceful, you become more happy, because the mind stays more and more in the present moment. And this present moment, in fact, you know, is the source, you know, is the source of true happiness. So as you become, and as you grow more into the present, you know, you see yourself becoming a much more happy person. It also helps you to grow in your consciousness. You know, you kind of don't just think about yourself. You know, the circle of your compassion starts growing. You are able to feel that oneness with others as well, with the world as well. That helps you to become a much more compassionate per person. So, in fact, meditation has so many such benefits. And I feel in today's world, especially when we all complain so much of stress and tension, it is important that we find some time every day for doing this practice. Well, I feel that the hug that Amma gives is not a mere physical gesture. Because through this hug, you know, Amma is also kind of working on each and every person coming to her. She is sowing a lot of seeds in each and every person seeds of peace, seeds of love. And as they start sprouting, you know, you see the transformation in the person. Of course, the, the physical gesture is there, which Amma says it's the it's a gesture of love. When a mother meets a child, you know, what does the mother do? You know, to express love, the mother gives the child a hug. So Amma does that, but along with it, there are a lot of things happening subtly. Like, you know, she's planting these seeds of love and peace in each and every person. And as you provide the right environment for them to grow, 
you can see a positive transformation happening automatically in every person. Also, Amma says through her hug, she is awakening the qualities of motherhood in everybody. You know, qualities of a mother are not just for women, you know, even men need to have it. Only then can you find the right balance in life. You know, when you talk of motherhood, you, know, you kind of reflect on qualities like love, you know, patience, sacrifice. All these qualities are not just for women. You know, men also need it in life to find the right balance, to find the right harmony. So, through all this, Amma is also awakening these qualities of motherhood, you know, in each and every person. And uh, we, we can see the transformation that she has created in the lives of millions around the globe. You know, so many people find life more meaningful. They feel a sense of, you know, of uh, contribution towards life. They are much more happy. And not only they feel the happiness, they are also able to give that happiness to others. So, there are so many people who have found, you know, this uh, Amma's hug to be a way of, you know, of kind of uh, becoming more positive in life and being able to contribute something to the world, to the society. It is true, you know, when you have gone through painful situations in life, when you have the feeling that you have been abandoned and, uh, you know, you are ki kind of quite lonely or when you are disappointed by certain happenings in life, people tend to lose their mental strength, lose their purpose of life. But the right attitude towards all these situations would be, to analyze these situations in a deeper way. Amma always says, every situation in life, every experience in life has a message for us, you know, which you know, will help us. If you understand it, it will help us to grow in life. Life is a very unique teacher. It gives the lessons, it gives the exams first and the lessons later. Normally in school it is the other way around, you get the lessons first and the exams later. But life is a very unique teacher, you get the exams first and the lessons later. So, if you really are able to keep up, you know, the, the, the mental equanimity, receive, accept that situation, understand the message behind it, you know, you could surely learn a lot from it and that could really help you to kind of grow, not to repeat the same mistakes, not to fall in the same trap of expectations and to become more mature in life. So, we should not be in fact losing our desire to live. In fact, we should try to say that, okay, I have had this experience. That means, there has been something wrong with my understanding or there has been something wrong that I have been doing to kind of understand that and to kind of see what is the way out. You know, understand the message and try to become more mature and more wise and try not to repeat the same and to move ahead in life. Life is a wonderful gift that God has given us. In fact, you know, the purpose of it is, you know, to know who we are, to be peaceful and happy, you know, infinitely, not just for a short while, but infinitely. So, if you are able to use it in the right way, understand it in a right way, you know, every moment can be a celebration. If you take life of all great masters, you know, I do not think anybody else has to go through any such obstacles like them. You know, they all face so many obstacles in their lives, right from a very young age, but they never gave up. They show us through their lives that if you have the right attitude towards it, you can still keep going and every step in every experience like this can be a stepping stone in life. We will be able to turn all these scars into stars and we will be able to really move ahead in life. So, I feel we should be able to take them as important lessons, as stepping stones and not lose hope. Well, I am a diehard optimist. <laughs> I would never agree to anybody saying that nothing can happen better, you know, and the world will just remain as it is. I always feel that even if there is a small change happening, that 
also is significant and that can all add to the total picture. So every small thing that we can do, we can contribute to society has its own place. You know, as Amma says, one drop from the ocean if you remove, of course you may feel that it, you know the ocean is still there, but at least that one drop is less. So in a similar way, if you are able to make one person happy in the world, at least you know the number of people unhappy become less by one person. So any effort from our part is surely significant and we really you know should never lose hope that way. I'm always says you know there are a lot of people to ask this question you know why is the world in this condition and when you sit with people in, and when you hear people talking with each other in trains or in restaurants many of them will be asking each other what is this happening you know why is the world like this but Amma says the more significant question is that we should ask ourselves what can I really do to change the situation what is my role in this situation. We never kind of enquire into that. So that is the real question that we should be asking ourselves. What can I really do to make the situation better? How can I make this world you know, a much better place? So if you ask this question sincerely, you know, there is a lot that you, know, you would get, you know, a lot of enthusiasm that you would get to contribute something to the world. And you know, my master Amma, you know, kind of is a very good example for that because through her work, through her life, she has been able to inspire so many people, you know, into this path of selflessness, into the path of service. And these people, when they go wherever they are in their respective places, they spread this light to so many around. So it is possible. What, it, what, what we need is an inspired mind. That is in fact the most powerful weapon, an inspired mind. If you are inspired, you know, you can do quite a lot. In fact, we need to be more focused on what we are able to give, you know, rather than what, you know, we are receiving. That is also a main problem that happens with human beings. We are more kind of thinking about our rights. You know, we think very less about our duties or about our responsibilities. So when we think more about our duties, our responsibilities towards society, you know, we would always be kind of ahead in trying to do something good for the world. Well, spirituality is never against money. You know, it's never against gaining material possessions or it is never against money. In fact, some people have a very wrong notion that, you know, if you understand spirituality, then you become averse to money, you become averse to, you know, all material things. It's not like that. In fact, all of us know that money is needed for survival. You know, we need money for our needs to be met. But what is wrong is, of course, you know, earning that money, you know, using unrighteous means. That is something very wrong. You know, to make yourself rich, if you are snatching somebody else's money, that is wrong. That is not the right way to do that. In, in Hinduism, you know, the four pillars of life are mentioned as Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. That is, Dharma is righteousness, Artha is wealth, Kama is desire, and Moksha is liberation. So, desire and money they are given a place in life. We all have desires, we all need money, you cannot negate that. But the only thing is, the foundation for it should be dharma, that is righteousness. Earn your money in the right way, you know, enjoy the desires that are dharmic, that are not only making you happy, but are also making others happy. So that is the only thing, you know, it is never against money. So, if we really understand this and if you use righteous ways of, of uh, you know, earning money, it surely, you know, can help us. At the same time, it can be so helpful to others. Of course, another thing is, you know, with money, many fall in the trap of, you know, of having more and more. They feel that a little more is going to make them secure and then they will be really happy. But in fact, it never ends. You know, the more you gain, the, you feel a little more and I am going to stop. 
but it never happens that way. So, we need not think that you know real security is in money, that again is a, is a notion of our mind that real security is in our money, because you know any amount you have you think a little more would make you really secure. In fact, the source of real security is only within you know understanding who you are that alone gives you the true security. So, we need not you know we should not be searching for real security in such things and at the same time you know we also need to try to share what we have you know with others as well. Because Amma says if you know you are just keeping everything for yourself and not sharing you know you become a very sick person. It is like a heart that would think that I am only going to receive blood, but I am not going to pump blood away. You know, such a person would not be alive. Or another example that Amma gives us, if you have a hand that is always closed like this, you know, it is a, you call it a crippled hand. You know, a hand is beautiful when it can close and when it can open. So, there is nothing wrong in earning money, but we should also be ready to share it, you know, to share it with people around. Sometimes we have enough for our needs and maybe a little more. That little more can mean a lot for others, you know, can really help them in their lives. So, to have such an attitude is also extremely important. My concern is the same as the concern of so many other people, you know, we see the growing number of natural disasters happening. Recently, we witnessed you know the tsunami in Japan, which killed so many people and has created such a destruction. And such disasters are happening regularly. We all know about the effects of global warming. We know the receding of energy resources, the receding of water in the world. It really is a you know is a source of alarm, it is kind of something that we need to be concerned about and we need to think of you know what we can do to rectify the situation. Here again I would not really go with people who say that oh you know nothing can be done, you know it is all over and we just have to wait for the end. I would not believe in that, because if there is a growth in consciousness, if there is a growth in awareness, there is a lot that we all can do, you know, to change the situation. Many people say that we have reached the dead end and there is no, no further way in front. But I always think, if you have reached the dead end, if you are driving a car and you have reached the dead end, what do you do? You do not stay there, you turn back, right? You turn back and you see, where did I take the wrong turn or where did I go wrong? And then you try to take the right path you try to accelerate, so that you know you can gain time. So, in a similar way, we need to look into the reasons why you know why we are in such a situation, where did we really go wrong and try to kind of you know change things in our life. If we become more and more aware, there is a lot of things that we can change, even you know even in our daily household activities, like you know reducing the consumption of water, energy, all these things, you know, reducing the consumption of things, you know, sometimes we consume more than what we really need, but we could have, you know, a check on all these things. So, there are things that each person can really do to kind of, you know, bring a change in the, in the situation. Normally, we are just thinking about our present situation, but Amma says, you know, we have been given this world by our ancestors. We also need to think of the coming generations. You know, if we leave it in a very bad shape, they are the ones who are going to suffer. So, it is our responsibility as well. There may be countries that, that may feel that, you know, we are fine, you know, the problem is with some other countries. As long as things are okay here, you know, we do not need to worry. But that, that again is a wrong notion, because we are all interconnected. If somebody else is having a problem today, surely it is going to be become our problem very soon. Amma says, it is like a person living on the 10th floor. He looks out of the balcony and sees the ground floor on fire. And he says, oh, that is not my problem, it is only the ground floor that is on fire, let them take care. But this fire can soon reach the 10th floor and can really you know, cause destruction. So, we really need to be aware of it, that it is not just 
you know, a particular country's responsibility or a particular country's problem. It is the responsibility of each and every one of us to grow in awareness about this. All these years, you know, we have been taking and taking from Mother Nature. We also need to think of what we can give back. We need to be grateful to what we have received and also look into ways that we can really give back something. This growth in awareness can surely bring about a change and can really kind of lead to, you know, to, a, to repairing this harmony that we have really lost with nature. Of course, I feel that music has a very important part, you know, in bringing people to, to spirituality because when you really hear devotional music, you know, it could be instrumental, whatever it is, when you hear even classical music, if you are really able to kind of, you know, be focused on it and kind of, when the singer is singing from his heart or when the, the person who is playing the instrument is really fully involved in it, it creates a particular vibration where automatically your mind, you know, kind of becomes very quiet and you kind of, you know, go quite deep within yourselves. And uh, especially when, you know, the person who is singing, you know, is a, is a person of a spiritual stature, it can really create such a big impact, you know, in the people who are listening and it can really kind of make you feel that, that silence with it can really make you very focused and once you feel it, you know, you would want to kind of, you know, experience it more and more. You would want to experience this silence more and more. You would want to experience this kind of peace more and more. And then you kind of, you know, investigate more and more how you can do that. And that brings people very close to spirituality. So I feel music has a great part in, you know, in opening our hearts. Even for people who have nothing to do with it, sometimes when you hear a song, you know, or you hear an instrument, you know, the notes of certain instruments, unknowingly it has the power to make your mind very silent. Sometimes you feel, you get tears in your eyes and you don't know why. Music has this power of really calming down the mind and especially when the person who is rendering, rendering it is totally absorbed in it, it surely has a power to really kind of, you know, kindle this, this divinity in you. Of course, you know, spiritual music creates vibrations that really helps you to kind of uh, grow more in this field and to kind of grow more in spirituality and enter into spiritual search in a much deeper way. Normally, people have uh, two notions of happiness. The first notion is that happiness is a matter of luck. And the second notion is that happiness depends on external situations. But if you really analyze both, you know, the happiness is a matter of luck or happiness is, a, is a, something that depends on external situation, you find that you never really get total happiness through both. Because in both these cases, if you are thinking that luck, like getting a lottery prize would get, give you happiness, or if you think that material objects and people around would give you happiness, you can find that in both these cases, you are not giving yourself any role in that happiness. You are expecting the external situation or somebody else to kind of bring you happiness. So, you kind of you know, do not give yourself any authority in it, you do not give yourself any role in it. But in fact, what is true, what is really true is the third option that is happiness is a choice. Amma says that like any other decision, happiness is also a decision, a firm decision that whatever happens in life, I will be happy, I will be strong. The remote control of our happiness should firmly be in our hands. We should not be giving that to anybody else and it should not be others or to dictate our happiness. It is our birthright, we have infinite happiness inside. We just need to tap into it and if we are able to do it, every situation can keep us happy and there will be nothing that can really pull us down.
in today's life, of course, we are all running at hectic speed from one activity to the other. We are all extremely busy in life, but at the same time, you know, there are certain things that we should not keep as something that we would do in future. There are certain things that need to be given the right priority in life. Right from childhood, you know, we have been told by our parents or by our teachers that do not just sit, do something. We have heard this quite a lot, do not just do, sit, do something and we have become so conditioned by that. But at times it is good to reverse it. You know, we need to tell ourselves, do not just do something, sit. We need to find some time for ourselves, some quality time for ourselves to introspect and see where we are going, to kind of grow closer to our true nature, to understand who we truly are. And the important thing is to also find time for your family members. You know, in the rush of work, sometimes you know we neglect that so much. We kind of you know think that you know all that can come later. But such things, if not given at the right time, can lead to a lot of suffering and disappointment in future. You know, giving time to children. Know, sp spending some quality time with them is very important in their upbringing. It is not enough if we give them the best of education and all the facilities. You know, the personal touch has a very big role to play in it. So, if you are able to give that to your children, you know, give them the right values at the right time, that can really mold their lives in such a great way. I am always says a child's mind it is like a grassy path, you know, the more you walk on it, a path is easily formed. It is like a freshly cemented floor. When you step on it, that mark stays forever. So, if you are able to give them the right things, the love and the values at the right age, you know, that will surely stay with them and that will really help them in life to find the right happiness and harmony. So, never compromise this for anything else. Find time for yourself for your spiritual search as well. You know, we always think about our physical personality, you know, about our social personality, about the emotional personality, but we also have a spiritual personality. Like many of the authors say, you know, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience, but we are in fact spiritual beings having a human experience. So, we need to find time to really know who we are in reality and also find time for others as well. Whenever something like a tsunami happens, we see that the whole world gathers, you know, to help, which is, which is really great to see that how the whole world becomes like one family to help. But there is another thing, if you carefully look around yourself, there are such small tsunamis happening all the time, sometimes in families very close to you, sometimes with your neighbor. But, you know, we kind of turn a deaf ear or we just do not notice it at all. We can do a lot to help the people around also. Maybe we are not able to help them materially or financially, but Amma says, says that still there are things that we can do. You know, at least we can say a few kind words, at least we can give them a patient listening so that they feel relieved. At least we can sit with them for a while, that itself will give them such a sense of support. And all these things are free, you know, we do not spend anything for this. So, to spend time for others, you know, is also extremely important.